Today I will teach you how to look for hidden secrets in email headers. If you get an email from some unknown party, you can learn a lot from this. Or if you send an email out, you will know what info you're leaking. It's coming up. In order to duplicate what I'm showing you in this demonstration, you will have to install Mozilla Thunderbird as your email client. This will work on both Windows and a Mac since there's a Thunderbird version for each of those. What you will learn today is that sending an email is kind of risky. The sender is actually including a lot of information with it. Email's already a postcard by nature. There's nothing private about email content. The subject and the, the body are, of the message are unencrypted. Encryption methods, which are difficult to execute, are only effective on the body of the message. Attachments are not encrypted at all, so sending PDF files or zip files even with a password is not a security measure. The files can be captured and decrypted easily in most cases. Most email clients do not show you the email headers other than to show you the sending party. So this is the Thunderbird email app. Mozilla Thunderbird client, email client. And this is what I suggest you use if you want to look at the message source anytime. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the inbox and I have pre-sent two email messages from my Gmail account and you see that this first message just has the message test on it the second message just says test to no VPN so this is from Gmail to this email account called YouTube at Brax.me I'm gonna look at the header by first going to the menu and then clicking on view and then from there, I go to message source. And then if I click on that, that will bring me to the header. I'm going to talk about this later. I just want to show it to you right now. And then later on, I can discuss that in detail and show you exactly what those items are and what they mean. Then let's look at the second email, again clicking on the menu, and then clicking on view, and then message source, and that will display the message source of the second email. Okay, I'm going to show you the explanation of this in a moment. So I copied the email message into a different viewer so you can see it in a clear view and then I put little labels on it so you can see. This is the main email message which I titled main email content and you can see the to and the from and then there's a subject line. The subject is in plain text. And then there's a bunch of identifiers below it under message. There's a date. There's a user agent, which, by the way, tells you what kind of computer I used to do this. This was using Windows 10, and that's indicated right there. It even tells you that I'm using Thunderbird. And then there's the MIME version, which tells me the content. And there's the body of the plain text content, which just says test to no VPN. Now, this particular message, just for example, I made an attachment here so you can see what it looks like. And the attachment is simply a MIME header followed by the content in Base64 format. Now, that looks like it's some sort of encrypted gobbledygook in there, but that's actually not anything encrypted it's just in a different format i will show you later how you decrypt that into something readable okay. 
So this is the message. As we scan up, you can see the message. And the first thing that happens when you send a message, it goes to the first server, which is the server of the sender. So here is the uh, sender's email server. And when it receives email, it prepends the information it gathers at the top, prepends it to the email. So it's always at the top. So this is the first machine that received the email, which is the sender's email server. And you can see that information there. I'm going to discuss that in detail because that's very key. That's actually where the main content is. Then that forwards to the next server, which is Gmail in this case. And Gmail first uh, attaches a DKIM, Domain Keys Identified Mail header, which is used to make sure that this is actually the le100.net domain to make sure you're not cheating and this is not spam and this is done by coming up with a mathematical hash of the information that's currently in the dns of that domain le100.net and that's a private key public key combination so they can verify, every email program can verify that that is correct. That did come from the Google domain. Google has uh, actually a another server, which it sends this to. It's a message transfer agent. And the next one now will be the actual gmail.com. And that itself also has a DKIM or domain key identified mail header to make sure that you do get the actual email from Gmail itself and not from some spammer or somebody spoofing the domain. So that is to ensure that gmail.com is valid. Again, that's a mathematical hash based on the data from the domain name server. Now, this whole thing is sent to this machine, which is the mail transfer agent, and then it will then be forwarded, or message transfer agent. This is now sent to the message transfer agent, and you can see that that is now forwarded to the final server, which is the receiver's email server at YouTube at Brax.me. So this is the Brax.me server, and it received that email from Google and you can see it says received from that Google server and you can see the IP address of the Google server that sent it so that that again verifies the the path to make sure we know exactly how that email arrived now what I'm going to show you is go back to the email main content so we can look at this in detail again this is the portion that is the most important and it always is the first thing that you see right above the to and from so this is the information collected by the first server the first email server where the sender sends the email and let me just show you this this is the machine name and many many email clients will insert the machine name in there now I just called it my YouTube machine, but if your computer is named Jana Smith, oftentimes many email clients will actually call that the Jana Smith computer. And that second thing in there in there is the IP address of your local area in your local area network. That will be the IP address in your local area network, which doesn't mean anything, so you don't have to worry about that. The second item there is the next part of the route where it sends it through your modem, your DSL modem. And this is what really identifies you here because there is the IP address of your DSL modem. So now we know where to find you because we know what the DSL modem is. If I can contact your ISP, I'll know exactly who you are. It will tell me who you are, especially if I have a claim against you for DMCA violations and such. 
and they will know where you live. They know, will know everything about you. On the left side of that is the uh, address or the name of the modem, which in this case is SoCalRSRR.com, which tells me that this is actually a spectrum spectrum modem. That's spectrum. From the days when it was called Roadrunner, it's it's the old domain they had, and they had uh, been purchased and repurchased so many times. And there's a specific modem that identifies your modem in your house. Now, there are other dangers associated with having this IP address and that information revealed there about who you are. There's a lot of information that I can gather from that. And aside from the machine name, and these are the things that you need to protect from. And I will now discuss a little later why it's important that you do not show that IP address. Again, everyone will know what that is from your ISP. They'll know exactly who you are, as well as third parties with access to that data. Now here I'm going to show you that the Base64 encryption or encoding is not any kind of encryption because you can just pass it through a Base64 decoder and you can see it's just plain text. Just looks like it's encrypted because you can't read it, but it's not really anything special. Now, after seeing how your IP address and your machine name is revealed in the email header, let's analyze the risk of this. An IP address is not some benign piece of information. If you download some movies or music illegally, you will get a direct DMCA notice from a big publisher demanding payment or face a lawsuit. Typically, they will demand like 50K. As you can see, they can easily find you. All they have to do is ask your ISP for the exact name and address of the user based on a specific time and it will point to you because they know exactly who their sub subscribers are. They will have it in their logs. When you go to an app like the Weather Channel app or other services that require locations like a Yelp or a Craigslist or any number of many websites, those platforms have a record of your location which is given by the browser, and then it has your IP address. These IP location combinations are sold to third parties. These databases have been created because many people allow locations on their browsers. If you never allow locations, you may not be in these databases, but it's very easy to accidentally include them. One of the sellers of this kind of data is a company called MaxMind, which markets location tracking as part of their fraud detection services. Of course, anyone can subscribe to these databases, and there are many suppliers of location IP reverse lookup data like Skyhook, Newstar, Big Data Cloud, Zoomigo, and many more. So you can play games like use some temporary email address or use a fake name, but without understanding how email headers work, you will be zucked anyway. Here are some basic tips to make sure your email headers don't reveal your info. Number one, make sure you are using a VPN, especially at home with a DSL service. This prevents third parties from identifying you. Now, if you're smart, you will use a VPN router instead. This is a hardware version because you don't accidentally turn off your VPN and leak IP addresses in the background. Unfortunately, email goes back and forth in the background on your computer and your iPhone and your Android. And sometimes your VPN could be off while that email is going back and forth. Bytes VPN is not only an excellent VPN service, it has an inexpensive VPN router you can use in your home to ensure that everyone is always using a VPN and not revealing an IP address. So that's in the description. I'm going to link uh, bytesvpn.com, which is my company and my product. Number two, 
do not put your name on your computer or your computer login. If you call your computer Jaina Smith and your login Jaina, then some email clients will identify you with that and include it in the email. It's stupid, but there it is. They do it. I found that Thunderbird will not do crazy things like this to your email header, so it's a better one to use. Which leads me to number three. Use Thunderbird as your email client. Not only will it enable you to view email headers, it also prevents something called a beacon attack, which can ping your computer in the background and reveal your IP address. If you don't have your VPN on at the time, it will expose you. Number four. If you're on mobile or do not have access to Thunderbird, use a webmail option to access your email. This means do not use built-in email clients on Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. They all leak your data in the headers. In the absence of these apps, use webmail. Go directly to gmail.com, yahoo.com, outlook.com, etc. on their website and it will be fine. These apps reveal your locations to those providers, meaning Gmail, etc., but will not send them to third parties. It will not be in the header. If you have a VPN on and you're sure it's always on, then you usually have nothing else to worry about. This will be a multi-part series. This is just part one. I'll be talking about other aspects of email so you're informed about its dangers. Email is somewhat unavoidable, so we have to look for ways to understand the pitfalls. Thank you for watching, my friends. YouTube gauges the importance of my message based on your likes, your comments, and if you subscribe to the account. So if you haven't done so, please join the family and make sure to smash that notification bell so you see all the follow-up videos on this topic later on. Thank you.